you're listening to the Board Game Snobs podcast, a ridiculous podcast with ridiculous hosts that discuss ridiculous things. And any mention of board games is purely coincidental. And so, without further ado, and with a heavy dollop of shame and embarrassment on my part, I give you the Board Game Snobs. <laughs> And go. It doesn't tell me my mic's working. Is, is it working? It's working. This is Jerry of the Board Game Snobs Podcast. Not formally of the Board Game Snobs Podcast. We've got to remind that Dan Hughes, who's in charge around here. I, he's just the impromptu star of the show. Thank him for coming on. He substitutes very well. Next time, get Evan. Evan's the star. He's got his own. He's superstar Twitch player. I don't know. I've heard Evan. Evan, his son? I mean, I heard him on Sporadically Bored one episode. He's on Twitch. You got to get on Twitch. I'm not He's always twitching. I don't twitch. Playing Cuphead or something like that. I don't know about Cuphead. He needs to branch out. I don't really like, I've never played Cuphead. It looks like it's too hard for me. It's animated. I don't like like a cup that is anthropomorphophized. Anthropomorphophized. I don't like a cup that's alive. Do you remember Animorphs? The book yes. where everybody morph into, oh, I'm a cheetah. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> that was weird. I don't like it. We traumatized children. Mask. You remember that? I don't remember that one. Were the cars alive? No, they had drivers. I don't remember that one. Transformers. Don't the, care for it. Transformers different. Transformers were. Anthropomorphized. Jack is mad about that. You don't, you like Transformers? Yeah. Jack. Yeah, I do too. My actually. son Jack is here in the studio with us. He's, he's Jerry still, brought his kids. That's a, Surprise. We were going to the shoe store to buy shoes, buy footwear for my children. And we had to stop in. I said, listen, kids, I don't care if you want to get home and see your mother <laughs> or go get something to eat. We have to stop and shoot an episode of one of the best first board things game first. podcasts. And I appreciate your sacrifice, Jack. So Jack's going to sit in on us. And since Enrique is too busy working, he is legitly working. We don't have time for him. We're going to be doing. And you'll learn something, Jack. Enrique. No, no, no. You're going to learn some stuff today. I'm going to. Did you know? Well, well you're going to do a did you know? Because I have did you knows, but they're not did you knows. They're, I'm Mine gonna, is a did you know. Oh, okay. I was going to tell you. Vikings believed that a giant goat whose udders provide an endless supply of beer was waiting for them in Valhalla. Mm-hmm. So I have a few questions. Okay. Go ahead. First question. How Would you this? Yes. suckle on a yes. teat yes. to get some beer About, of a goat? Listen. You're thinking of that wrong. I knew you were where you were going with that. Okay. Are you are you milking it? You're milking it. Duh. Okay. All Duh. Right. Second question. Duh. What kind of beer is it? Dark beer? Exactly. Milk stout. You know, I actually like milk stouts. I do too. They're not my favorite, but I will drink them. Wouldn't that be awful? <laughs> You get the ball hall and you, you're what the one with beer? the you're wearing the one with the Corona goat. <laughs> this, <laughs> this, what, is this, rancid. what is this rancid stuff? Well, and, and I will go out on a limb and tell you right now, anybody who drinks Corona willingly, you yeah. are don't know what you you're just like commercials and the beach. And you the, like you like you like pa- Pedro Pascal. Uh, well, now he's on the beach. You must live the good life. Coronas are the drink of the family. I believe, what does he say? What's the Spanish? I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know the Pablo Pascal? I have Pedro? not seen it. Pedro. I have commercial. not seen it. The Mandalorian is now the spokesperson for, and I said Pedro, I always say. You said Pablo. Pedro Pascal. I think you went Pedro, then Pablo, now back to Pedro. It P- is Pedro. P. Pascal is the spokesman for Corona now. Well, I mean, you got to earn a check. Yeah. He's not making enough, I guess. I guess Or not. just getting while the getting's good, I say. Uh, but guess, guess who's the spokesman for Shiner? Tom Brady. Nope. My, uh, somebody checks in. Matthew my, McConaughey. My man, Myth Damon. Oh. Who? Jess, Jesse Plemons. Okay. He go. He just said, well, we're in Texas. We like beer. And it's like, that's the entire commercial. It's literally him sitting in a, sitting in a bar going, yep. Is, here in Texas. is he... Has he lost the weight he had gained? Yeah, he had he gained weight for a movie, and then he lost it for that uh, Kinds of Kindness, that Greek guy show he with, with what's her name in it. Okay, but then not to veer too far off I topic didn't know he off was of this. To Christian Dunst. Yes. Go ahead. Okay, so you're in heaven, right? Valhalla's heaven. Viking heaven. Viking heaven. Minnesota. I guess that's a different heaven than other people's heavens. 
Okay, first of all, you're in a spiritual realm. I'm not going to get into the physics of drinking beer off the teeth of a goat. You're just I'll milking the it, goat. I'll leave it up to the Vikings. The way that genetics are going, it's, we could have a beer goat. We I, most okay. So a boat. <laughs> is the goat eating like hops, barley, yeah, hops, then letting it ferment, mm-hmm. takes in a little bit of yeast, yeah, yeah, it has to sit there, or is this just a miracle udder? Miracle, just endless, m- endless miracle udder. Messiah goat. Second question: Turning milk into beer. Why involve? the middleman being the goat. Why, when this version of their heaven is having the goat part of what, their joy, why not just have endless beer? Why involve the goat? Okay, here's my thing. If you had a keg that never emptied, that would make more sense, right? That would be like the thing. Right. Just a keg that never empties. Endless, in, like a bottomless plate of nachos at Chili's. Until you have to move said keg. And anybody who's ever rolled a keg knows they're inconvenient. If you have a goat, it just rolls with you. It goes with you. So you could just lead the goat from place to place. That's true. What if you want to move around? Okay, so it's the mobility factor yes. of so, the so endless supply of beer. Taking this goat, let's move over here to this part of Valhalla. Okay. Okay. I can understand okay. that. There's a goat. Or why not just, you know, a, a truck? They didn't have it. Vikings didn't have a concept for trucks. Mm, that's true. You're thinking way too deep. I guess that's modern. Also, what if it eats accidentally like some jalapeno peppers? Will that transfer Will be, into the beer? There's no jalapeno peppers in Viking in heaven. They didn't have those. See, you're thinking way too deep on this. Okay. The concept of Valhalla was there. How many? Okay. So then what's your other favorite things to eat or drink? Vikings. Did they also have to go through a goat that carries those things? No. They were just like venison. I think you're putting a lot. Turkey legs. You're taking a lot of weight. Did they milk a goat that secretes turkey legs? I'm just saying you've got a lot of, you're putting a lot on the mythos. Well, I just, uh, the goat thing threw me. I understand endless beer in heaven. Sounds great to me. The goat throws me off. The giant goat. Who says it's a giant goat? It it said it said a giant goat. I don't know what size is said goat. Because <sighs> there are pygmy goats, there are regular sized goats. When you say a giant goat, what size goat are we talking? Maybe it's big enough where you can just walk up underneath the udders I don't, and just squeeze I know, it directly down thinking, into your mouth. I don't think that's the case. You don't think so? Nope. You think a giant goat is like a just like a Great Dane sized? I would say. Yes, Jack. Jack's raising his hand. Goats also goats were also the main meat supply for the Vikings on their islands. Now is that fact or is that a Jerry fact where you kind of think it's a it fact? It sounds like he just he said that very he said that <laughs> he very, learned it from the best. But they're mountain people, I would say. Mountain goats. I'm gonna have to say I feel in that. That's where they got their hairstyle. Makes sense. Okay. They didn't have a lot of cows. And that's where they, that's where, where that's where they got the horns for their helmets was cows. They didn't have their helmets didn't have horns. Uh, I've seen the pictures. No, the helmets. They did not have horns on their helmets. This might just be that's a misnomer. What well, I've seen the Minnesota Vikings play football. I know, but that that and they have horns drawn on the helmet. That's the picture. That's you fake. think that's fake, Jack? They didn't have oh, that's historically erroneous from what I understand. <laughs> Are you telling me? They can teach something and show something for years, decades even. And it be wrong? In history? Constantly. Yeah. Interesting. Like, like Abraham. They're not Abraham, that's George. He dropped down the t- apple tree? He yeah. fell out of the apple tree. <laughs> Just fell out of it? No. <laughs> that's how Abraham died. No Abraham. scientific proof that he ever chopped down a tree. Who? Was it? George. George Washington. There is no scientific proof that he ever chopped down another. Every time, every time Dan hears George, he just yells, that traitor. <laughs> traitor. Traitor. <laughs> Almost professional level general. Yeah. He was a professional level general. He lost a lot. Okay, that was my factoid to get us started. Oh, Go, yours? So the Olympics. Mm. I've been obsessed. I just watched Noah Lyles win the 100 meter. Who? Noah Lyles. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. So, Jack is just chattering constantly in the background of this episode. You got to be quiet, Jack. You, you're doing you're a terrible job as Enrique. Oh, Enrique never speaks. Enrique never I'm speaks. I've spoken to. So how, first off, one of the things that irritates me about the Olympics is that it's such a broad 
plethora of games that really most people would have no access to do. Except some, like like the shooting, but even then they put a twist on it. Like the shooting that they're doing, like that 10 millimeter, like the Turkish guy who won silver. It's like air pistols and things of that nature, but there is skeet shooting. Anyways, I digress. How does something become an Olympic sport? Something so niche, seemingly. You are wrong. I thought the same thing. Well, that's why I said the word seemingly, giving myself a way out. I noticed, but I will trap you in this. Apparently, as part of it, for a sport to even be considered to be adopted into the Olympics, it has to be practiced and enjoyed in at least 75 countries for a men's sport, 44 women, according to the Olympic organization. So it has to be widespread. So, which throws me off because a lot of these stuff is like, who's pole vaulting? Mm. Why is chess not an Olympic sport? One might ask. I thought this myself. It's well internationally it, played. I feel like this is a question you're posing rhetorically. Yes, because I know the answer to okay. it. It shocked me to find that they will not admit games that are necessarily just intellectual. There has to mm. be a physical aspect to it so oh and it cannot be you uh use any type of like propulsion which is why i like racing nascar things of that nature Uh are not admitted to the sport go-karting true i would i would want there to be elect why can we not have electric go-karting in an olympic sport i don't know it'd be that anyways Neither here. They should have goat carting. Neither here. The Vikings would do that. There nor how. Some of the games that I got to looking into of when and how they became. How many games do they play total? Do there, you know, there's a bunch of them. I looked it up too, and I can't remember. But there's the. They, you can go onto the Olympic website and list everything that they're playing. And some of these things you have no idea that they're even playing. Mm-hmm. Flag football. Well, yeah. I've watched most of the. The whatever they're airing on NBC, I'm watching. Okay, but they're all pretty standard: walking, swimming, racing, bikes, that type of stuff. Did you know, tug of war? I know it was was an Olympic sport. Yeah, I saw that. Poodle shaving. Because somebody was there was a comedian. He's like, "Well, what, tug of war. Like, what's the coach's job? Pull harder." Well, I mean, I guess you don't really need a coach in that. You just need a trainer. And large athletes to pull. Poodle clipping. Now, are you doing past and present, or is this present? This, these are the mo- weirdest events. Poodle clipping <laughs> in Paris, 1900. So is that like with your car? So Damn. it was a test event that they, they proposed, meaning it didn't have full Olympic status, but it didn't make the cut. It involved 128 competitors performing in front of a crowd of 6,000 people in a park, where they had to clip the fur off as many of poodles that they could in two hours. So it's a speed sport. Yes. Like sheep shearing. Is the that winner in there? clipped a total of how many poodles, you think? In two hours? In two hours. Now, what is clipping? Toenails? I'm assuming that they're when they say clipping, they're mean, they had to clip coach. the fur off of them. I bet you could do one a minute. So no, 120. Clipping. We're, you're thinking of electric clippers. We're talking oh, scissors, bro. Old school. Old school. Ooh. And fighting this poodle. How many? You think two hours? How many poodles did the gold? 12. It's close. 17. Hmm. Makes sense. Anyways, curling. Curling. Like biceps? No, you know what I'm talking about. Curling. Oh, you're doing winter now. Yes. Okay. Curling. Yeah. I like curling. No, you don't. I, I most certainly do. Nobody loves curling. They slide and push the big stone. Nobody I likes watch it curling. all the time. And the feverish sweeping they do ahead of the stone, it's, it's amazing. It is not amazing. I was shocked that it was even a thing. I think it's Everybody really cool. Everybody made fun of it. I don't, I don't make fun of it. I don't, I don't understand it. how it could even be. It's shuffleboard on ice. With, but... Did you know where, what country did it originate? Oh, I'm sure uh, Norway. Nope. Iceland. Nope. Greece. Nope. Wherever they get those big stones, that's the originator. Getting close. Uh, it is a land. Greenland? Mm-mm. Okay, I don't know. Scotland. Oh, okay. They brought it to Canada and formed 
some sort of curling group in Montreal in 1807. The Montreal Curling Group, making it the first organized sporting club in North America. Oh, wow. So the first organized sporting club in North America was curling, but it was played on frozen lakes and such, which is why it explains why it never made it to the South and why we have no concept of it. We just do bowling. But curling is somehow played in 75 countries? Apparently. So when you say played, so I'm guessing there are people... Uh, is it enough where people can live off this profession? Or are they like curling and Nobody, then also a waitress in no, the full none time? None of these Olympians are making any money. The runners are, because they got like endorsements and stuff. But these dudes that are doing these other things, they ain't making no money. Yeah. Well, that's why you have like Flava Flav and... You know, Flavor Flavor like sponsored the women's water polo team because uh-huh. they were working like three jobs to try and pay for their tickets to the Olympics. There you go. That's sad. That is sad. Jack is out. Jack's out. He said he's he did done. not like curling. That's all it took. My own kids couldn't stand this podcast for that long. 33 sports was in the 2020 Olympics, 32 this year. I wonder which one they dropped. Which one didn't make the cut? Oh, it dropped down flag, to 74. Football. That's shocking to me. I don't. I mean, I don't even know. I didn't know that many countries played American style football Here's, with flags. I don't like the Olympics in the sense of. Oh, I love the Olympics. I don't. I just don't because I find it mesmerizing. It's just mesmerizing because they make it that way. Well, true. I mean, that's what. I mean. Well, me and Dan did talk Olympics, and he said he was talking about how he's watching these. You know, little did Dan 14, hate him? Yes, but he had said the same thing of. You start watching something and they suck you in. You end up sitting there for however long to watch who wins children's skateboarding. Yeah. See, I don't, I don't like, I don't like the Olympics and I don't like the fact that they don't. Here's how we should do it. You should just randomly pick somebody from each country. 10 people. You got four years. Start training. This is your event. That would make it so much more exciting. It's just like a thing. You have been drafted into this event. We're sending representations from this country, not like the most elite of the elite who've practiced for since they were 15 years old to, you know, to do some weird thing. How do you get into pole vaulting? I don't, I don't know. You don't. I don't, I don't know. You just decide. Some, it's in a thing. Someone comes up and says, have you ever pole vaulted? Here you go. And you do it a couple times and then now they hook you. I'm just saying, it's just such a weird... Pommel horsing. I don't even know what that is. The little thing when they, they spin their bodies around on the... They have to hold on to those two bars. It's in the men's oh, gymnastics. Oh, the dude! I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. I thought I was actually picturing a horse. I thought they were beating up on horses. <laughs> Pommel horsing. I'm on the horse. Beat this horse up. Uh, it might be more exciting than the actual event because I don't care for the pommel horse, but I do love the gymnastics. I love the track mate. I watch the swimming. I watch it all. All right. Pommel horse where they just have their arm. The, pommel horse. And they do the thing like they're a helicopter. That is, all right. That's insane. The amount of athletic skill that takes is amazing, but most people could watch the top 10 whatever and not know what they're judging what what do you how do you know they're doing well you exactly. don't know no you don't know. i don't like that it's like the pole vault thing either you get over the bar or you don't you got to keep your toes and your feet together and yeah. pointed yeah it's like the rest of it you until just, you split them apart or figure skating that made sense remember in the 90s where everybody loved figure skating christy yamaguchi tanya harding nancy kerrigan busting kneecaps remember that that well, was amazing and i liked it back in the day when you just uh, you, you give somebody a 10. Yeah. A 10. Perf- perfection. Now they have, well, you have these difficulty levels because Simone Biles can do these tricks that nobody else can do. So she gets a difficulty level of 6.4. And these other girls, before they even start the vault, they're at a 5.2 because they can't do the trick that Simone. Then you're done. Get yeah. out. Yeah. Get out. And then everything else. So then they, then after that, after the technicality of the event, then they have like the artistry, ba- ba- basically, which is the 10. What I'm just saying, the whole purpose is that each country sends their absolute X Men, the people who were born. That f- swimming guy, that Phelps guy a few years back, yeah. like that did studies on him, like his lung capacity and all this stuff. He is just weird. He's a mutant. That's what, and that's who you have. If you got, if you got somebody who can do that, you send them. You train those people. Then you have like 
Shakari, who was kicked out of the last episode. She wasn't kicked out. She didn't qualify, disqualified, whatever, because of she smoked some weed. Trains for four years. And it comes into this, and that's all everybody's talking about. She has all these expectations on her. Comes in second. Who's in the hundred meter running? The running lady. Yeah, because she got kicked back. Oh, you're right. She got kicked out because of the marijuana. Thing. Yeah, she smoked some weed. Her somebody had died in her family. She thought she'd you know ease some pain, and boom, suffered the price. For the last four years, this is all she's thought about. And she shows up and came in second. There you go. Oh, it's awful. It's heartbreaking. What's heartbreaking? It's heartbreaking. Second, I mean, for her, because no. she she was not happy with it. She's not happy with second. She was not happy with second. Getting a medal in the Olympics is insane. I know. She it should be appreciated, but it see. is appreciated. Nobody can name the dude or who woman or whoever it was that got gold in the ten meter shooting thing because a Turkish guy got up there with no equipment, like he just That's true. owned it. And he you got some, silver. It's all about having a personality going into the sport and you creating that for yourself. That way, the media picks up on it and you can make some money. That's I all, hope that Turkish guy makes some money. Is, do we know that he's poor? He's probably Maybe broke. He's Maybe so. He's probably broke. Turkey. You probably don't have any. That's why I can't afford the glasses. We're not saying it properly. Turkey. No. Turkey. Okay. Turkey. It's like they're cheering for themselves. Turkey. <laughs> they built it into the words. That's smart. That's really smart. That'd be it. like United States of America. Huzzah. Huzzah. <laughs> that's why they, <laughs> they should change like, it to well, that. Yeah, change it. I, well, I'm all in on the Olympics. I, I can't take my eyes off of it. I couldn't care less. I love it. I, I don't like the fact how they treat the, the athletes. Well, that is terrible. It's awful. And I think it's a lot of it's just, I don't know. I don't, not, I don't get excited about the Olympics. Since the first modern games in 1896, 10 sports have disappeared completely from the Olympic schedule. These are croquet, cricket, jeu de pain. I don't know what that is. Pelota, polo, roke, rackets, tug of war, lacrosse, and motorboating. I wonder why I got rid of lacrosse. I don't know. Not, not enough countries. Maybe. Lacrosse is kind of weird with the sticks. It's like almost football. It's where they just like beat each other up with sticks. and It's like soccer with sticks. Which would make soccer a whole lot fun. If they, if they want ever want Americans to actually care about soccer... Cut the field down by four to a fourth of its size and have it tight. And like that way you can get some scoring in. Everybody has a chance. Instead of having this massive field, there is no regulation soccer size field. Each place is different. Mm-hmm. And you got all these guys running around, you can't tell who's who and they're kicking. It's like, no, I don't want to watch for hours and one person score. Five on five. Yeah. Put them out there. On half size of the field. Like hockey. Five guys, your best five guys. I want more shots on goal. Ah, uh, yes. You know what I hate is and a goalie. Of course, we're speaking out of complete American ignorance of the beauty of the sport. It's not. It's the most. It's a kids beautiful game. game. It's a kids game here. The most beautiful game. So you have all these guys, and you're trying to advance the ball. Well, it's not working out. So let me kick it all the way back to our goalie, way in the back, to wake him up. Wake him up, and then he just kicks it super hard to yeah. somebody out in the middle, and then it's. I also don't like the fake falling. That, that thing is gets me. Even the coaches. There was one where the guy just ran by and touched the other coach, and he's like, <laughs> "Oh, he just fell over." The, you have replay. It's replay bad. it. Have the have the refs get to watch it and go like, "No, every." Dude supposed flop is oh they've just been they've just their career is ended but they lay and out then they, there until um, they get drug out That's and they what gets immediately me. hop back up and start running down the field yeah, again well, it's such a joke uh, i do hate the flop i hate it's the real flop. bad that hap- that happened for a brief period in american basketball where people would flop and they got that no people got angry but i do like the world cup i watch every game you watch the World anything Cup. that takes place every four years. I'm all about it. Nah, I don't do that. A leap year. I don't like I'm it. there for I don't it. Like it every four years. If it was that important, we'd do it every year. <laughs> oh. If it was that good, no, we'd it, do it, every it year. makes it that much more difficult. It it, it 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 dilutes it. If you do it all the time, it dilutes it. No, it does the Super Bowl? People lose their mind. Imagine if it was every four years. No, how huge it would no, be. No, because you can't keep together a team that long. That's true. 
Well, they, they don't either. They have a brand new team. Every, all these national teams is a completely different team than last time. I don't like it. All right. Well, that's our take on the Olympics. Yeah. I don't root for USA specifically. I root for people. I root for people. I root too. for stories. I, I do. I like, I, I will admit it's the stories that matter. Oh, it is interesting. Story. Like when you, it's because it's like really, when you're, when you're, when, is there a tinge of pride when your country wins something and it's like you never knew this thing existed? I didn't care about the pommel horse. The first gold that they medal they got in 16 years is some dude that waited for two hours and then hopped on the pummel horse. They didn't get gold or medal. I thought he got yeah. gold. No, they got oh. bronze. Did he? They were very happy to get bronze. Okay, well there you go. Because the team, the team sport. He team also sport. got bronze on the. Well, there. Well, himself. yeah, whatever. Well, yeah. See, it's like nobody. It's like it's hard to go go for this team that I don't even know who's on said team. Mm-hmm. I yeah. don't even. It's like I never knew of this person. Or this thing. A lot of these sports, I'd like, how do you watch flag football? I want to watch flag football. Where is that? I want to watch it. I'm interested in knowing how do you Olympic oh, it's on flag peacock. football. Oh, I can't, I'm not getting on Peacock. I don't watch anything named after a bird. Really? I don't like birds. You watch badminton? Badminton's cool. There's a birdie in it. I used to play badminton. I do. I have a badminton net. I know. That's a cool game. It's dangerous. And you got me hooked on pickleball. I go play pickleball every weekend. We're going to play pickleball after this if you don't, if you need to go. I brought my pickleball stuff. Did you really? It stays in my car because me and Jack will go somewhere and it'll be like, let's I'm go scared. play pickleball. I'm scared to play. Why? Well, you got to get back on the horse. I know, the pommel horse. Your, I'm your shins, all your calves. We're talking about the calves. Oh, my calves. I'm scared. You said you recovered. I am. I I'm, I I'm feel like I'm back to 100%. Stretch. But I'm, Just stretch. I stretch every time. What if I do it again? The fear's there. Well, then you're hurt again. If you never do it, you'll never know. This mm-hmm. could be your Olympic sport. What if the what if the Olympics started doing pickleball? Calf stretching. And yeah, calf stretching. Like doing things I that would, might injure your calf. I would never qualify because I've never stretched my calves. Your calves have been hurt so much. They're so taut. I have been trying to work on them, though. All right. What have you been doing? Stretches. Oh, just constant stretch I, I asked Bubba's wife Amy I was like how do I, I don't I, what well, I don't even know how to stretch a cat that's a weird person to ask my eyes she that. was familiar I was talking to Bubba and she was like telling me how to stretch my calf she's like you do this and I was like oh okay they, it, it, okay at first I thought it was you were sitting there thinking who can I ask for advice on how to stretch my calves I know Bubba's wife <laughs> no and it's like no, okay so you were the, talking okay we were having a group discussion. Uh, and you brought up your sore calves. Yes. Like, and they were like. I said, I think I'm good to go, but I just don't know how to make sure I don't injure myself again. Speaking of calves, if one of my children here, they could talk about the calf that they're bottle feeding right now. Oh, really? Yes. Is it beer? No, it's electrolytes and milk. Mm. It's Well, they got rid of all, most of the cows, and apparently some mother abandoned its baby calf, and so now it's living with the Border Collie. I it hope it it's fares- a dog. Better than the last calf your daughter was feeding. But this calf's doing great. Well, that okay. other calf was sick. This one was abandoned. There's a difference. What, one, was, what was wrong with the other calf? It was just abandoned. It was, had illness. It was cold as in the winter. Hmm. This one was just mama gone. Didn't care for it. So you just got to feed this guy. I got to name this calf because Jack. Oh, Jack always. Does that mean you're not going to eat it? No, we don't eat the cows. Oh, you we don't? Sell them. Okay. He'll be eaten by somebody else or be a bull for somebody. Anyways, the kids always name the cats and Jack's always names them like whatever they happen to look like. This one's chocolate. We'll name him Mocha. <laughs> it's like, like, listen, I got to name this calf Patrick Mahomes. Moo. Holmes. Moo Holmes. Moo Holmes. Okay. Yes, Patrick Moo Holmes. <laughs> I got you. Yes. Because Jack's That's a Kansas City Chief fan. He I did do. not like it. But yeah, now the calf has no, but since we've gotten rid of all the other cows, this calf is just here by the house, pinned up, of course, in an area. There's no other cows around. He's just around the dog. I think the calf thinks he's a border collie because he's around the dogs. So he's just like, when he gets out, he runs with the dog. It's like, oh, I'm with the guys. And maybe you can make him like a, a hunting cow. I don't know, but it's going to be weird. This cow is like not going to want to associate with other cows because he's thinking he's a dog. I'm afraid this cow's going to start hurting cows because he's with the border cow. Like, let's get these guys. <laughs> Kaya or Jack's missing one day and you like let him sniff his jacket. Cow takes off. Go get him, Jack. Patrick. <laughs> Find him. Like Lassie. <laughs> that would be awful. Yeah, I hope so. I hope your children never go missing. 
That's I think a desire that most parents have. I hope I hope that never happens. Till they get teenagers and they're like, ah, oh, I don't mind them going. <laughs> it's ten o'clock. Do you know where your children <laughs> are at? Remember those commercials? Yes. But my parents always knew where I was because I was a very obedient kid. I was called in and was home before curfew. Mm-hmm. That's a good kid. Good for you. Well, it's been a while since we recorded. I know it has been. This has been like oh, six weeks, it seems like. It's been a good long we've, while. I've been in the studio. I've been so, busy. I've been getting ready to go to the Dice Tower Retreat, which oh. I'll, I'll be sleeping on Dan Hughes's couch in his suite because he's a ex-Dice Tower member. Or is he a Dice Tower? I don't know. He's I can't something. keep up with it. I think he's, he's still out. In the, he's out pushing. They're in the Dice Tower network. He's out pushing that core request everywhere. All right. So we do have a, a just a couple Which core request is really of good. emails. Really like core requests. Okay. This one goes back. I don't. I just wanted to say, I don't know if we ever read this one. Maybe we did. Who? But just real quick. The wishing Jerry well with Jason Brousseau. Who? That was before you had your surgery. There's your son. Here he comes. What do you need? Back in. Oh, thank you. We were talking about He's Patrick Mahomes. Moo Holmes. Moo Holmes. There you go. Just, yeah. Oh, the calf. There you go. Sure. Not, not actually. No, down low. Push it down low by Push the handle. Push it down low. Like, you are like Enrique. Just like Enrique. Burn. Okay, so this one's from Sean Franco. Oh, James's brother. He says, Spectrums of Games snobs it was interesting hearing jerry and gobby discuss their preferences between ameritrash and neuro games this was some time ago because this was written july 10th i propose a different spectrum to compare simulation versus abstraction part of this does tie into your well i need to read better part of this does tie into your preferences for whether or not a game needs theme but part of it also ties into your commitment to the fidelity of realism. So like right there, he lost me. I don't know what he just the said. The fidelity of realism? Jerry has probably seen some extremes of simulation, such as war games like ASL. The American Sign Language? The mechanic, the mechanics, the mechanics of such games become more detailed to most accurately capture the way that things interact in the real world or in history. Contrast this with a different game that you've played, Square on Sale. This game is ostensibly, look, Sean, if you're going to use big words, make them where I can understand what they are. Ostensibly about city building, but that theme is abstracted to the point of almost being immaterial. It's a game much more about showing off neat interactions without any reliance on thematic justification. But abstracts also tend to streamline both the learning of games and the playing of games with themes being used as a linguistic shorthand at best. So, snobs, tell us, please, where you land on simulation-heavy games and abstraction-heavy games. I'm glad you reminded me of this email, because I did email him back and forth on that. So, uh, and I do like his categories of simulation and abstraction. And so, the idea being, I can't remember exactly what my email is, so maybe I'll end up contradicting it. Don't read my email because I'll end up, I want, I want to see if my opinion has changed. <laughs> maybe I, okay. watch me say something completely opposite <laughs> of what I emailed to him. But it's with been a, done before. But with abstraction, what he's talking about something being something simulating a game. And he makes a good point. A lot of war games are a simulation almost. Like they're trying to do their best to make, to capture some aspect of warfare, which is easy for most people to look out and identify because there's a map and that cliche of people pushing parts around on a map and moving things around and and having these people on the dudes on the map that's easy for you to to simulate and so thus it feels like it's a simulation but there are other games that whether or not you realize it or not you are engaging in a form of combat but it's so abstract that you really don't realize that And so I would say that I've never been one for abstract games. Like I really like something to have, to have the feel of whatever the topic is, whatever the theme is. And I believe in my email to him, I said that for something to cross over into that simulation realm, it has to have, it has to capture some aspect of the theme, something that lends itself to whatever it's trying to betray. And thus now it's crossed over into, let's say, it's crossed over into that. 
now that now it's a simulation rather than something that's just plainly abstract. So the, like, well, go ahead. But no, no, I, you're pretty on par with what you said. Your last one said, because he said something else. Then he says, you said we're going to discuss this, but I would say the line is drawn because he said, where's the line drawn between the, the two? You would say, you said when an abstract requires a mechanism that is misaligned with the theme. Mm. So they toss in something that's good. That, <laughs> because when you ask that question, they're thinking, "When is the line to draw?" I'm sitting there thinking, "Man, that'd be hard to line." That's like, "Oh right, man, man, I'm on fire." So basically, you're doing something that doesn't make sense for the thing. Basically, yes. So you got to dumb this one down for me, Sean. But now I kind of understand what. Oh, you're okay, saying. so like, I'll use Ticket to Ride. This basic game. Mm-hmm. So obviously, there's a map. You're creating railway. You're you're making these lines, and so. Any other game that I, I would call that an abstract game in comparison with something like any of your 18xx games or your Age of Steam and things of that nature, because you're, you're using money, you're building routes, you're having trains, it's all these other things that are that are very in line with building a, a railway. Whereas with Ticket to Ride, it's like, how do you build said railway? Just pick a car. Buy a car. I got Keep you. Keep getting cars. Or so so or for for take of that trend game, like Ticket to Ride, okay, you're you're making connections. I mm-hmm. guess that's the thought of that. But it would be more like, oh, here's a train game where maybe like Coal Baron kind of sort of, we're, okay, I need to make this train go. It needs coal. Well, we got to dig some coal. Okay, now we got to transport the coal to the train and feed the engine type right, thing. Right, right. Yeah. It, it's, it's how many, and to expound on that email back to him, I would say that it would be, if it were me and I had to make a solid rule, of saying this is what this is the line that you draw when something is abstract and something there's a simulation how many mechanisms are there and then go okay this one lends itself to the theme this one is abstracted cuz it's just pick a card there you go whichever side has the most thus it leans towards that simulation the more that you have it for instance i'm thinking of 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 brass Birmingham and Lancaster, that rule of, okay, coal, you have to have your, tra- your, your, your transportation has to come from your coal, but, but copper can just come from anywhere. Mm-hmm. In the rule book, it actually says it was because, well, coal was transported by trains and copper came by wagon, so it doesn't matter. That lends itself to reality, mm-hmm. and it's a rule mechanism, and it makes sense. It is one of those exceptions that kind of confuses you at times during the game, but in real life, it adds to the rule. The actual thing of playing a card and you're going to build here, that's abstracted. But there's so many other things that lends itself to this has to be connected. You have to use this. You have to use that. That are all added to the simulation, such as the, the connections in the area that you control, so forth. It it lends itself to being a simulation more than an abstract. Makes sense. There you go. So that's what I'd say. But that's just a, that's an oddball opinion. But that's what I would say to Franco. Franco. James. Sean. Sean Franco. And then we had another one from Star Wars Max. Yes. Welcome back. Uh, he had some words for you to use with Dan. And I, I, some of these have been used here before, but I'll reiterate them. He said, for Dan, when you hop in the passenger seat before anyone else, say Bagsy. Bagsy? Bagsy. Like shotgun? Yeah. Okay. They don't say shotgun because they no. don't have guns over there. No, bagsy. They have bags. They have bags. Of rabbits. You right up front? No, wait. That's uh, cats. They got cats in the bags and they let them loose. That's not. Oh, I see. You call back. And you can say, hey, bloke, I call bagsy. Bloke's pretty, pretty well prevalent. I don't know if I know Dan enough to call him bloke. Is bloke? Him? He says it means dude. Oh, bloke is dude? According to Star Wars Max, how familiar he is with the english culture i'm not sure i bet he bet he's but his email does so well you know i think it's gonna be right up budge up mate budge, so if like, budge up so like if dan is sitting in the driver's seat these are and, all and evan is in the in the passenger seat but you've already called bagsy you can say budge up mate to evan and he would need to scoot over for you bagsy bloke budge yourself up so i can yeah before i get cheesed off now that one i've heard cheesed before. off it's the same as angry. That where you makes get cheesed no off. sense. Yes. Chock a block. Don't know. It means full, packed, overloaded. None of these things mean anything. 
Chuffed. Chuffed? That sounds like chaff. Delighted. Oh, if you're chuffed, you're delighted? I would think that you're angry. You're going to be chuffed to be there. I am going to be chuffed to be there. Now, he did sign off with, he said, I'm exhausted, only got to see, but those should impress him. Then he signed off SWM. SWM, Star Wars Max. First thing I thought of was single white male. Like he was just letting you know he's, he's a single just white male. <laughs> Just like Craigslist. So is he looking for? Oh, is he looking? Is he looking? I don't know. SWM looking for SW. Maybe it maybe it could go wherever. I I. But then I was like, why does he? Oh, Star Wars Max. It took me a second to realize what he meant by those initials. Mm, so I don't like initials. You're anti initial. I'm anti initials. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of a lot of fluff. But, a lot you know, of chuff. I'm lot chuffed of, to be here. Chuffed for the fluff. All right. I well, am rather cheesed. It's been a while. Cheddar. Until until the next episode, whenever that may be. Who I'm Gobby. This is Jerry. Oh, Jack, you want to say something? And we'll cut you out. And I'm Jack. Thank you for tolerating this episode of the Board Game Snobs. Stay classy. Mm-hmm.